tonight's course, what we're going to do, we have someone coming in. So for tonight's course, we're going to talk about some basic concepts that we all have to understand before we do any SEO. What we're also going to do is we're going to learn really not only how we rank a page, but what the steps are and what goes into that. And certainly we're going to get into that all later in more detail. But for now, we're going to you know go ahead and um, take a look at that. So as always, if you have questions, use the chat widget on the training website or post in the Facebook group. I am usually within a day or two getting the videos from the, e the evening, from the, um, the evening live sessions in there. And what I'm trying to do is give you guys a guideline of where I talk to what, where I talk about what, so you don't have to go back and kind of listen to the whole thing. You can look at what's relevant to you. And if it's support, of course, it's, you know, um, support at shdtraining.com. Okay, so before we go any further, we're going to talk about some definitions. And so phase two, we talked about it last time, phase two. And by the way, if there are questions, you can ask me in chat. I have a separate window open so I can see chat tonight. So, and if they're, they fit into the, where I'm up to, I'll certainly answer them. If not, we'll answer at the end. So driving traffic, we looked at this whole model last time and we talked about where we are in space. Phase one, phase two, phase three. So just a reminder that this is phase two and we are driving traffic. And so that means whether it's SEO or it's social media or AdWords, whatever it happens to be that we're doing, we are doing it to drive traffic. So where does SEO fit? And we saw this last time. Module one we did is the setup. Module two is core concepts, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And that's going to serve as the foundation for the rest of the steps that we're going to go through in this course. So what is SEO? And just to give you a visual representation of that, we have SEO on the left side. Your website's in the middle. Social, or whatever it happens to be on the right. New patience is the goal. When you wake up in the morning, you don't have your cup of coffee and say, oh, I am looking forward to having um, you know, more traffic to my website and more visitors to my website. No, what you're looking to is saying, I wish I had more patience. And I think that is what I want to underscore here. So the key is that we're gonna drive traffic and I wanna wake up in the morning and say, my goal, what is my currency is new patients. That is what I want. It's not necessarily you know, money. It's not necessarily time off. It is new patients and that's our aim. So definition, when we talk about SEO, as I mentioned last time, the, you know, SEO, as we're talking about, has paid search and organic search, which is non-paid. But whenever we talk about SEO, what we're really talking about is organic search because paid search is about running ads or giving someone money to run ads for you, but you're paying per click. So they call that search engine marketing or SEM. But when we say SEO, we're talking about organic search. And what that means is it is the process by which we place carefully researched keywords in specific locations within your website. That's it. So we are, we are putting carefully researched keywords in specific areas of your website. That's SEO. That, that is all that it is in a nutshell. What is my goal? Goal number one is to drive traffic to your website in order to get new patients. That's the goal of SEO. Now, what's our workflow? And those of you who have done some SEO with me, you know the workflow, you've seen this workflow but we're going to use specific keywords on specific pages with the goal of appearing higher in search engine rankings for that, you know, for that keyword, for that search, with the goal of driving more traffic to your website, with the goal of generating new patients. So this is why we're doing it. We're gonna use keywords because we wanna rank higher with an assumption that the higher we rank, the better we'll click, the higher our click rates will be. And then we're gonna get new patients because we get people to our website. Obviously, once we have people to our website, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have new patients, but that's the first step. So organic versus paid. Last time I glossed over this when I said to you that paid is here on the left, Google ads, there's Bing ads, uh, but that is now we're really gonna get into the nitty gritty moving forward of organic search. Note that Facebook ads, I really don't put Facebook ads under search engine marketing because Facebook ads are targeted. That came up as a question. Search, the reason it's called search engine marketing is because when I type in a search keyword into Google, um, used car dealer, you know, Maplewood, New Jersey, what's happening is I'm seeing organic listings that are the ones based on people's websites. And I'm also seeing the ads based on the advertisements. Whereas Facebook isn't, ne isn't necessarily based on what I'm searching for. In Facebook, I could be looking at an article about whatever it happens to be about the weather and I'm gonna see ads 
because Facebook targeted targets ads based on certain parameters. So I can say, uh, I would like all of the people who show an interest in uh, the ADA and the American um, Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, and they are between 25 and 40, and I want to show them an ad. So that's the difference. So Facebook advertising certainly is something, but it doesn't come under the SEO umbrella. I would say, though, it is under this phase two umbrella as we drive traffic to your website. Organic search, as we said, organic search is based on the content that you have on your web pages. And here's that used car dealer. You can see here, these rankings here, New York used car dealer, that's all based on what's on these people's websites. Paid search, same thing. The ads are triggered by what my search keywords are. Ranking factors. When it comes to ranking factors, there are more than 300 ranking factors, as many of you know. And so how am I possibly going to go with 300 ranking factors? And the good news is you really need to nail a handful of them, 10 or so, to, to, to really be in, in a good position. So I want to underscore that we rank pages, not websites. Now, certainly there are, there are thoughts about how a, web, a website itself ranks, that yes, your website will rank as a, um, an entity in and of itself. But generally speaking, I won't worry about that. If you come across something called the domain ranking or domain authority, that does exist, but I don't want you to worry about that. Worry more about pages themselves. So I want to rank our Invisalign page. I want to rank our homepage. And you say, we're not going to say, I want to rank your website. We're going to say, my goal is I want to rank my webpage for um, Honda dealer, you know, Maplewood, New Jersey, whatever it is. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to try and match our page to the appropriate keywords once we learn the search intent. So here's some ranking factors. I won't go through them all, but we'll go through a couple. Link profile, that is how many people link to you. Information architecture, which is nicely spelled wrong. Information architecture is the structure of your site. So you want to lay out a site. It doesn't matter as far as Google is concerned, if you have a navigation like home about services, patient information. But it does matter if under about you have, you know, meet Dr. Wank. And then again, under patient information, you've got meet Dr. Wank. Then you have a meet the team page that isn't in the navigation. So Google scours through a website and you can think of it almost like a, um, like an outline form. Google goes through all the steps in the outline. And if your outline isn't in a regular order, if you're, you know, you're teaching kids about an outline form, Roman numeral one, two, three, four, five, you've got a Roman numeral eight floating on another page. It's not, it's not coherent. It's not cohesive or coherent. Keyword selection, of course. Obviously, if we want to rank for veneers and we don't have a page about it, it's not going to happen. Google My Business Profile, I put a question mark. Um, this is a slide that's a couple of years old, but the concepts still apply. That I can't tell you that if you and I have the exact same you know, website or the exact same profile for ranking on a certain keyword, that Google My Business won't make a difference. But I certainly know it can't hurt if you have it filled out. Page speed matters. How fast does it load? Keyword density. Am I, am I saying, um, Dr. Wank is a dentist in Tribeca, New York, because he loves Tribeca, New York, because Tribeca, New York has great restaurants that are only really available in Tribeca, New York, so come to Tribeca, New York. Too dense, but that's keyword density. Keyword placement, where is the keyword? The top of the page say, um, dentist, general dentist, Tribeca, or at the very bottom right, like we said last time, does it say, Dr. Wank, you know, my friend, Dr. Wank is a dentist in Tribeca. Accurate NAP, we're going to get into with local SEO, but that's name, address, phone number. Is it the same across the web? Mobile ready. How fresh is your content? How long is your content? If I have a page about um, deep cleanings, that's three sentences, and you have a page that's 40 sentences, you'll probably rank higher than I will. Review numbers come into it from maps listings, and we'll talk about the rest of these title tags, alt tags. How old is your domain name? Always register your name for a good 10 years. You register it for one. It's not going to hurt you. But again, if there's tight competition, the longer you register it for the better because it signals to Google that you're not just trying to rank and leave. Server location, you should have your servers located in the same country where your website is. SSL, you've got to have it. Now there are other questions about, well, if people spend a lot of time on a certain page, will that make it rank higher? Um, what's the bounce rate? responsiveness. So these are just a kind of idea of what goes into it. And I will narrow these down to help you to show you what really matters. 
what I did with this here, and this is not accurate, this is just a representation, the weight is unknown and it can change. Clearly, if you look at the, um, you know, the keyword selection, even where that is on here, if you look at the keyword selection, that is certainly going to be probably the primary factor in ranking for a keyword, because who cares how fast my website is compared to yours if we both want to rank for, um, and we'll take, you know, Jolene's Fertility Institute of Hawaii, if I want to rank for, for IVF procedures or, or about IVF costs, if my page is incredibly fast and I don't talk about IVF cost, well, it doesn't matter how fast it is. I don't want a web page that's fast that doesn't talk about what I'm looking for. So I would think that keyword, you know, keyword selection is the most important thing and past that, and we're going to look at these steps, but past that, we're going to get into the other factors. So that was the workflow. Again, we said we're getting specific keywords on specific pages because we want to rank higher because we want more people to click when we rank higher and getting new patients because we're getting people to our website. So offsite SEO, we have an entire module about offsite SEO, but I want to give you the highlights. So register your domain name in your name for 10 years. And I'm going to write this down. I did not put this on the worksheets for this week, but I'm going to get a pen right now. Um, if you don't already, please make sure, please make sure that your domain is registered, that you own your domain. That is very, very important. And that means probably a godaddy.com or register.com or something like that. I want to make sure that you own your name. And the reason is because if you don't own your domain name and you decide to move web hosts or you decide to move anything, you don't have control. Uh, there was a situation on Dentaltown where uh, one of the web companies, one of the proprietors who ran a sole proprietor, he passed away unexpectedly and he owned the names of these clients, these domain names, and the clients couldn't do anything because if you call GoDaddy and say, hi, I'm, I'm David Wank, of, you know, DavidWank.com, they're going to say, I don't care if you're Winston Churchill. It's registered to X, Y, and Z, and they have to call. Same thing, host your website. We mentioned that in the country in which your practice is located, really mostly for speed. Um, you know, unless, of course, you're in a country where internet connections are super slow and you need to have it hosted elsewhere. But for the most part, try, you know, if you're, if you're in Canada, try and host in Canada. If you're in the United States, host the United States. And low-hanging fruit links to your website. We have a separate module about links, so I'm going to skip that for now. On-site SEO. So to clarify, off-site SEO are things that, that are outside of your website. It doesn't matter what your keywords are. It doesn't matter what your, what, what anything is. It's about how the rest of the, 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 let's say the metadata or the information about your website that is not relevant to, or not, that is separate from what you type, what, what it's separate from the content on the pages. I'll say that better. So it is the external factors for your website and not tied in to the structure of your website, the hierarchy of your website, or the content of your website. Now, obviously, offsite SEO, these are, they are ranking factors as well. Google's going to say, well, if we have a website and we want to show some results for um, um, infertility testing, and we've got one website that has great content, it's been around for 10 years, and another website with great content that's been around for 10 minutes, well, you know, I don't want to send someone to a website that might not be there tomorrow. On-site SEO. So on-site SEO are the things that we do when we build a website. And I talked to you, those of you who have done SEO with us or spoken to me about it know that I always like to do a technical and a structural audit because I want to make sure that when I, when I, when I, we go to work on your website, if we do any keyword research or keyword work, that your website has the foundations and the fundamentals done. And we talk about how Google says, well, we want a website built to Google standards. Now, there's no, there's no checklist you can download that has Google standards, but what I'm going to show you now are the basic things you have to get done. And I think one of the best examples is, is when I was in dental school, I was an ice hockey goalie. And what I did is, is no matter what team we were playing, I always wore all of my equipment. And well, it'd be crazy not to. And the reason is I might have said, well, you know what? That team has a reputation for not shooting high. So I'm not going to bring my glove because they're probably not going to shoot high. But then if they start shooting high and I let in five goals, I'm going to have to go back to the bench and get my glove. And the same thing with Google and with SEO. Google's going to tell you, do these number of things that I'm going to tell you now to do. And you might say, well, I don't want to do that or I don't need to do that. At the end of the day, I don't know where they're going to shoot the puck, right? 
the end of the day, I don't know what your competitors are going to have or not have. So it doesn't pay to do a half job or a third of a job or three quarters of a job and add later. I had someone, I was lecturing for, um, gosh, was it was Zimmer, the implant company, a couple of years ago. And someone came up to me and said, hey, I had a, um, it's actually sent me referrals since then. But he, um, he said, you know, I used to rank well for this and that. And then my rankings dropped. Can we figure out why? And I said, no. He said, what? I said, because it doesn't matter why. So even if you know why, it doesn't matter because the treatment's going to be the same. So in the sense that, and again, it's not just a fixed item. It's one thing if he said to me, well, I turned off SEO, I turned off SSL and everything dropped. Well, we'll turn it back on. But what we would have to do to learn that is to see, well, what are his competitors doing? What is he doing? And we have to do an audit to see what the differences are. And even then, even if I could tell you that your competitors um, have a faster page than you have, that might change tomorrow because they might get a new website and it might be slower or faster. So to go back to try and figure out what, what one factor made a difference, it, it's not worth it. It's much better to say, what I said to him is, let's go ahead and do an audit top to bottom, a comprehensive list, because if you're missing one thing or 10 things, we've got to check them all off anyway moving forward. So there's no point just to fix one problem. So title tags. So what a title tag is, you're gonna see up here where the arrows are, where it says medical website design. That's the title bar of a tab in Firefox. And that's where we see a title tag. And you can see there's a little hover. It says medical website design. The second arrow points to that gray. That is covering over the search bar. I shouldn't have done that where it says HTTP with the padlock. So, but when you hover, when you were to hover over where the first arrow is pointing to that tab, it's gonna say medical website design dash short hills design. That's the title tag. And so you have to have a title tag on every page. Usually we have the title tag match the title of the page. And you can see in the blue, the horizontal blue area where it says medical website design, the E is cut off by that red arrow. That's actually the page title, which is separate than the title tag. But generally speaking, what you can see here is I decided that medical website design is the keyword that I found when I did research that, that had the highest number of searches. So I made my title tag on the top left, again, where that, where that arrow is pointing, the first arrow on the left, medical website design. I made the title of my page, medical website design. That's the white text with the blue background. And then we wrote the book on medical website design. So I'm trying to add medical web design without saying it a thousand times, but I'm putting it in these key places. Also notice, you look at the second arrow where it says medical website design, short health design, LLC in gray, the title of the page itself is also medical website design. So the title tag is what shows up in that top banner, that top area where the left arrow was pointing. The title of the page or the HTML, the URL title, is what it says in the browser, HTTPS, whatever it is, website design. The H1, which we're gonna talk about, is medical website design. That's usually the page title for people. Um, so that's, that's kind of just the structure that we look at. So title tags on every page. Properly formatted pages and posts. So in this, you can see here, H1, H2. When you look at HTML, and I have a video that we're gonna watch for homework this week, um, but it talks about the hierarchy of a web page. A web page, think of a web page as just a big outline. And let's say that this internal page is about, um, I don't know, um, let's pick a subject, used cars. Sorry, I'm looking for a car because I'm going back to work at the end of the week. We're getting a second car so we can do that. So H1, the title of the page, what's this page about? And let's say this page is gonna be um, tips for buying a, a used car. That's H1, that's the title of this page. That's what this page is about. H2 is going to be a subheading. And you might say, um, let's see. And so what is gonna be, so, right? So the H1 will be tips for buying used cars. And H2 is gonna be look for model years that are three years or, or, or less, that are, that, are, that, are, that are younger, I don't know what to call them in a car, are more current than three years because that's a subject. Now where it says content, that's gonna talk about that. Now, H3, now that might talk about a subset of that. Let's say that's gonna be if you're gonna buy a, an SUV. 
And then the next H3 might be if you're going to buy a compact car. So think about that as an outline of this page. The title of the page is Tips for Buying a Used Car. That's H1. There's only one H1 on a page. That's the title. That's what this is about. H2 is a subsection. And that subsection is, like we said, um, I forgot what we said it is. H3 is going to be a subsection of that. So this is the basic structure that we want for every single web page that we have. And so that H1 is the top title. The H2 is that TAN, that's the subheading. And then H3 are subsections. I don't have H3 on the left here, but it is. Generally, you never see an H4, or at least we'll use them structurally, but you're never going to use an H4 when you're writing content. And for P, the paragraph is just the paragraph text. So for example, let's say we did say that H1 is tips for buying a used car, and H2 is going to say um, what you need to know about buying recent model years. And then, because that's a subject, then the H3 one is going to be, you know, recent model years for um, trucks, recent another H3, recent model years for SUVs, and another H3, recent model years for sedans. Now we have the next thing you have to know is to um, make sure that you inspect the car before you buy it. That's H2 again. Now, what's the H3 under that? Uh, look at the hood to make sure there are no dings in it. Look at the license plate to make sure it's not bent, whatever it is. But this, this is a hierarchy and all these H1, H2s and Ps and things is this HTML structure is just telling Google what the hierarchy is, what the order of importance of these things on the page. Because you might imagine if we had gone with Dentist Tribeca, if my H1 is Dentist Tribeca, that signals to Google, this is about Dentist Tribeca. But if my H3, you know, said Dentist Tribeca, this might be H1, things to know about in Tribeca. You know, H2, arts and sciences. And then there's some H3s, museum, museum, museum. Then another H2, healthcare and dental. Then H3, Dr. Smith, H3, Dr. Wang. So clearly on a page about Tribeca Dentist, having, well, this would be a relevant page because it is, I'm in there but I'm one of 10 things on this page. So a dedicated page that just says Tribeca Dentist would be better. Page speed. You want a page speed of about three and a half seconds or lower. Usually the ways to fix page speed, and we will get into that another time, have to do with your server configurations and the sizes of your images. But you want your page to load a little, you know, about three and a half seconds. Now I could make your page load at 0.5, you know, at 0 0.5 seconds if I turned off all the images and just made a text like we had 20 years ago. But so there are diminishing returns on how fast you want a site to go and what it looks like to your audience, excuse me. So, you know, if you have a website that loads at 10 seconds or nine seconds, it's pretty easy or generally easier to get that down to six, five, four seconds than it is to take a website that loads at 3.4 seconds and bring it down to 3.2. Cause once you start getting faster and faster and faster, it costs more because it takes a heck of a lot more time. And I am honestly not sure how valuable that is for your money or practically speaking, because you could see a page that loads at six seconds and a competitor that loads at three seconds and the page that loads at six seconds actually loads, actually ranks higher than the faster one. So there are other factors involved. If everything else is checked and we find that our page speed is too slow, then we could speed it up a bit. But remember, this is all about competition. If your page speed is 3.8 and all your competitors are at nine, whether at 4.1 or 3.8 or 3.6, I'm not so worried. If all your competitors are at two, and I've never seen that for you know dental or medical or any small business website, then we'd have to think about getting it down to two with lots of compromises in the presentation, but that's just not practical. That being said, you know, it's just, it's just something to understand. Pass them Google, Google's mobile friendly test for responsive design. Uh, just make sure that you pass that mobile friendly test. I have to add that to our um, to the homework. Now, when you do do the mobile friendly test, you are going to see it might say on the top left there are page loading issues. Ignore that. Every website has page loading issues. No website ever gets an A in that area. So don't worry about that. Just make sure it says pass. Verify Google My Business. We talked about that last time. Now, page text. You want your page text to be between 200, 250, 350 words. I put a star because there are people who will tell you you want 1,000 words or 1,500 words. And the truth is, write what's relevant. Write 250 words at a minimum, maybe 300. 
for content dentist, I think our content has between you know, something like 250 or three, 325 per, per con piece of content. Um, I just wrote content for a, um, an insurance company. I think I gave them 600 words, but that's long. And remember, if someone's reading a web page, it's 600 words is a lot to read. Remember, 250 is, is a single page. So, you know, print page. So it's really, really long. Now, what I would say, and we're going to look at this later on, is that if you've written a page that's 300 and 325 words, and then you want to rank that page for a particular keyword, and you're not, then we can look at your competitors and see, well, what are your competitors doing? If your competitors have 1,000 words, then we'll aim for 1,000 words. But I don't want you to start out writing pages that are a thousand words each, because generally speaking, it's not going to matter. And we're also not going to want to rank every single page. You don't need to now. Certainly, yes, I want every page to rank first. But for Short Hills Design, I don't necessarily need all of my internal pages to rank first for everything. There are certain pages that I have that I really want to rank highly in search engines. But you know, as a dentist, I don't need to rank my hygiene page or my, you know, scaling page, unless some, you know, now for the gum graphs page, maybe it depends if you do a ton of that. So write 250 to 300 words a page in that vicinity. And then if we need to later on, because of competition, we'll expand that. Use alt tags for all images. We're going to, we're going to learn about that during our audit, what an alt tag is. But if we look back here where it says image with that X, that's, that's an image placeholder. An alt tag describes images, and we used to use them. Well, the, the reason that we use them in the past is because 15 years ago, before broadband, people were not able to load all the images. And if they were on one of their pre-smartphone phones or on a slow connection, you remember, if you're old enough like I am, to see part of the page load, part of the image load in chunks. And so we had alt tags. And what what would happen is you would describe the image and say, this is an image, this is a map of, you know, Tribeca, New York. And then the rest of the page would load. And then while then that image loaded, you would at least see what it was an image of. So you don't have to sit there. And that's why we talked about don't put anything that's important, like a phone number in as an image, because you can't click an image. Google knows that an image is an image, but it doesn't know what the image is. So I can put an image of a, the famous one that I use, I use a dog uh, wearing a, a, a Westie wearing denim. And I say, what is this an image of? And the audience says, oh, it's a Westie. Yes. It's an image of a Westie wearing denim. Yes. It's an image of a Westie with sunglasses. Yes. And all of those are correct. So it could be just someone who's, you know, loves their Westie. It could be a sunglass dealer that says, our sunglasses are so cool that Westies wear them or denim. So your alt tag, it could be sunglasses so great that even the dogs love them or something like that. So Google doesn't know what your intent is from that image. And that's what alt tags do. And again, implement a well-researched focus keyword for the page. Your hygiene page doesn't need it. Your meet the team doesn't need it. Your return policy page, if you're a small business, probably doesn't need it. You know, things like that. Terms of service doesn't need it. But for your top product or for your special offers or things like that, well, not even for so much for special offers, but for who you are, your bio, your main services, the main things you want to promote, then yes. Competition. So let's say we have your website and it's floating around and you have no competitors. So at that point, it really doesn't matter. You can think of Google as a very big filing cabinet. And if you're trying to rank for, we'll do, um, let's say, um, iPhone case salesperson or iPhone cases. If you're the only website in 100 miles that sells iPhone cases, then you know that your, your website might be the only one that's shown. And so if you have, or for example, if you have a, Ah, that's a good example. Let's just say that that's the case. Now, that website, your website could take 12 seconds to load and you could not be mobile friendly. If you're the only website in town or on the earth, let's say, that actually has content that matches the search, Google will hold its nose and it will do it. If you, um, and I never talk politics, but if you think about your, you know, anytime you might want to vote for someone who you don't really want to vote for, you say, oh, I'm just going to hold my nose and vote for A because I don't like B, or I'm going to hold my nose and vote for B because I don't like A. Google will go ahead and say, listen, I don't like this website. It doesn't meet our standards. So we're just going to hold our nose and we're going to show it to the user because it is the only website that does match what that person's searching for. 
more often than not, you're going to have competition. And so if there's three of you, you and two others, well, you know, there's 10 spots on the homepage. So I'm not so worried about that. What happens is, what, what happens when you're in this situation where there's a ton of you? What is this, three, five? You know, when there's a ton of competition for that same keyword, that's when it matters. So you look at all these things coming down from Google and, you know, the algorithm stuff that we talked about that I told you not to worry about. If you look at this, you're really competing against what are your competitors doing? I know, like I tell my kids, it's not a competition. Do the best you can. In this case, it is a competition. And we're going to base, we're going to go ahead with our baseline and lay out the best baseline we can. But once we start getting into trying to tweak our websites for keywords and for rankings, we are going to look at our competition. So how do we do it? So what is the sequential process that we use to rank a web page for a specific to topic? And this is what one client of mine famously called the marketing arms race. And he said that it's a race to the bottom. And in some ways, I agree with that. So let's go over this. Let's say we have an Invisalign page. We want to rank it in search engines. What are our steps? Step one, I want you to have an Invisalign page when your competitors don't have an Invisalign page. Or, excuse me, I want you to have an Invisalign page. And I want it to be built to Google standards. That is what you need to have. And if your competitors don't have an Invisalign page and you do, you know, you win. Two, the next step would be optimize your Invisalign page with the most frequently searched keywords. As we said, we're going to have an Invisalign page. If there's um, this much competition, we're probably done. If there's this much competition, we're not done. We have to move on. So I want to optimize that Invisalign page with the most frequently searched keywords. And that, that's part of what this on-site and off-site SEO means. And which is why I want you to have it optimized ahead of time, because then I can just kind of drop in my keyword and make tweaks instead of saying, uh-oh, I've got to go you know, build a whole website now. And then if that doesn't work, you're going to want to use the other keywords you discovered um, to write content and hope for the best with long tail keywords. So what that means is that if there are other keywords that are, let's say the main keyword has 50 searches a month and the other searches have two or three searches a month, well, if we can't rank for that top one because it's so competitive, what if we rank for five or six of those smaller ones? Because those search volumes will add up. But I'm going to show you that here. So number one, have an Invisalign web page. Um, when your competitors don't have a web page or have a website, you win. Obviously, you want to build to Google standards. And those are our on-site and off-site SEO slides. And so number one, let's assume we have a web page about Invisalign and we want to rank it. So obviously, if you don't have a page about Invisalign, you're invisible for the searches. You're not in the conversation. I was talking to a client of mine in New York City, and we talked about how competitive it is for you know whatever, whatever the service was. And I said, listen, you might have 40 competitors on the same block, but if all of them are trying to rank for that same keyword, I would rather, if we don't have a page about that keyword, then you're not even in the conversation. I'd rather you be one of 40 than not, not even in the conversation because if you're not in not one of those 40 or 41, whatever, you know, adding him, then you're, you're, you're completely, you've completely lost. So at least if we get in that mix as a minimum, then we can even be in the conversation. And if you look here, I say, you know, if there's one page on the subject, it's very easy to rank. And I put Montana because it's not that populated. But if you look at California, you know, if there's 20 competitors who each have a page about Invisalign, it's very, very difficult to rank. And so if you were to look at this example of a search engine, I guess I did note it, note one, two, three, but let's pretend this is a page one and page two. So if there are 20 competitors, and here are a bunch of competitors, not 20, obviously, and they each have a page about Invisalign, and they each use the same keyword you use, it doesn't matter how much money you throw at this, it is very difficult to rank for that page. And so now that we've done that, though, now that there's 40 of us, and we all have the same Invisalign keyword, how does Google differentiate among us? Who's first and who's 15th? We're going to talk about that now. So let's say now here we are. We made an Invisalign page and we rank 14th out of 20 for the pages about Invisalign for whatever keyword it is. And we want to get higher. So let's do this. So we have an Invisalign page. Let's check that off. Number two. Now we're going to optimize our Invisalign page with the most frequently searched keywords. Let's take a look at that. 
And when we do this, I think I forget what number that is in the step. When we do keyword research, we're going to get into this. And so first thing we're going to do is we're going to research the most frequently searched keywords. Then we're going to incorporate them with the principles of on-page SEO that I just talked about. So now let's say we're in Maplewood, New Jersey, where I live, and I'm going to make an educated guess and say Maplewood Invisalign. I have gotten phone calls that say, you know, David, oh my goodness, I did a, key, I, I did a search for, you know, Maplewood Invisalign and I don't rank, oh my God, what am I going to do? And I'd say, do you know if anybody's searching for Maplewood Invisalign? No. So what do you, you know, so before we start worrying that we don't rank, let's actually see if there's any search volume for it. And so here, let's just say we did some research, which I will show you how to do um, in a later module that let's research it. And we can see here, Invisalign Dentist Maplewood has 50 searches, Invisalign Cost Maplewood has five and two and zero, as you can see. And so what do you know? My educated guest keyword, Maplewood Invisalign, isn't on the list. And, you know, I mean, I want, I want to do that as a point because as intelligent as we all are and as smart as we think that, you know, we, it's our business, so we know better than the average person what they're searching for, a lot of times we'll do keyword research and we're going to be wrong. So, and what's annoying and frustrating but true is that Invisalign Dentist Maplewood and Dentist Invisalign Maplewood are different keywords. And you're going to say, why? And Google has said it matters about search intent. So I would think the search intent of Invisalign Dentist Maplewood and Dentist Invisalign Maplewood are the exactly the same thing. It'd be hard to argue against that, but Google says they're different, which is ridiculous. That being said, when we you know, do SEO, there are ways that we try and nail both of them. But if we have an Invisalign Dentist Maplewood keyword, um, that's probably gonna be about my you know, Maplewood Invisalign Dentist page. We're not gonna make two separate pages for that. It doesn't make sense. But we'll, we'll get into that when we do content. But suffice it to say that here what the searches look like. And so it doesn't matter if we don't rank for Maplewood Invisalign because no one's searching for it. Okay. So now we've researched the most frequently searched keywords. And we know from our search that Invisalign Dentist Maplewood has the most, most local searches monthly. So that's the one that we want to optimize for. So the keyword we're going to target is Invisalign Dentist Maplewood because it has the highest search volume. So let us now go ahead in that step two. We're going to optimize our Invisalign page to incorporate this keyword. So we've done that, right? We have an Invisalign page. We've optimized the page because we've researched, we found the most the keyword with the most search volume and we incorporated it. So now what? So what happens if everyone else has done the same thing? Uh-oh. <sighs> so now what do we do? So here are the same things that everybody, all of our competitors, I think we said we're, you know, there are 20 competitors and we're 14. So everyone has done the same thing we've done. They've all optimized for Invisalign Dentist Maplewood. What can we do? Well, two things. The first thing I would do here realistically, and I will teach you this later on, is we're going to look at some tools online and I'm going to see, you know, well, I forget, was it the Wizard of Oz? What have they got that we don't got? And that's where I talked about page, you know, the page length, the, excuse me, the, um, the number of words on the page. If we rank 14th and we do a look and I'm going to say, okay, Let's take a look at number one to 13 and see what have they got that we don't got. And we might say, oh, you know, those pages average 800 words of content for, on these pages where they're optimizing for Invisalign Dentist Maplewood. So I'm going to go ahead now and, you know, and have 820 words. And let's see if that makes a difference. You know, and say, yes, I've done everything. Oh, you know what? It turns out this page doesn't have an image on it. Great. Let me add an image and let me add an alt tag because it looks like everyone else does. Should I have a video on every single page? No. But if I do, if for this specific page, I see, wow, you know what? All the people who rank in the top five all have videos. Yeah, then I'll make a video. So that's why I want to establish you doing the absolute baseline that you need for search engines to be in the competition, to be in the conversation. And then once we want to optimize for a keyword and, you know, we do what we're supposed to do and we get ranked, then we can start looking about, looking at what our competitors are doing and tweak, which is why I don't want you making a video for every single page on your website. I don't want you to necessarily have an image for every single page on your website, although that's not as bad, it's not as time consuming. I don't want you, you know, to do all of these things to write a thousand words for every page on your website. It's a waste of time. So I want you to do the basics, be prepared. And then when we come into specific focused areas where we have to do better and we have to rank, you know, rank highly, then we're gonna go ahead and kind of go to the second step. So what happens if we've done that? We've done everything. And we meet all the averages of our competition, and now we rank ninth. 
Well, the truth is, unfortunately, there's not really more much that we can do other than get links. And we're going to talk about that uh, in a later lesson about links. But now, what's another thing we could do, another alternative? Well, if you look on our list, you're going to see that I had a few more keywords in there that I glossed over at that point. And so these are what's called the long tail keywords. So what I'm going to do is, if I can, or even if I'm in the running for Dentist Maplewood, let's say I rank eighth or ninth or even 11th, because you know we've, we just can't move further because there's 50 competitors. We can do is make a page about Invisalign cost Maplewood, Invisalign teen Maplewood. And, um, and I'm going to make those pages because there are searches. You know, Invisalign discount plan, no one's searching, so I'm not going to do it. Now, that doesn't mean I might not say, you know what? I think it's a great new idea. So I will make a page. It's about Invisalign discount plan. But I'm not going to make that page just to target searches because no one's searching for that. So a page about Invisalign cost and a page about Invisalign teen, uh, there are fewer searches, but I bet you the competition is less. And so I mean, we hope it is. And so at that point, maybe if we can rank, you know, first or second for Invisalign cost Maplewood and Invisalign teen Maplewood, that's seven searches that we wouldn't have had before. So if we can get four out of seven of those searches, if there's you know, five, six, seven, eight long tail keywords like this that have lower search volumes, usually you're going to see it in, um, you know, when we look at the ranking software, you're going to see it's like 10, 10, 20, 30, you know, 50, 90, you know, like that. But let's just say these each had, you know, 10 searches a month or fewer. If we take eight of these and add eight pages that have content about this and we can rank for them, you can see very quickly how that, that traffic number adds up. So those are the steps that we take. We've got a web page about what we want about the topic. We're going to optimize that web page with the keywords. And then all else fails with that, we're going to start using the other keywords, the long tail keywords with, with lower search volume, but we're going, to, we're going to do victory in numbers on that one. So now when we talk about competition, and I mentioned this when we talked about our um, earlier on with you know, what's the most important ranking factor, it's going to be the keyword. And let's just say Invisalign Dentist Maplewood. So if we want to rank for that, obviously we need a page. It's about Invisalign Dentist Maplewood. And a lot of mistakes that people make a lot, a lot of times is they'll say, well, here are the services that we do. We do veneers, dentures, crowns, Invisalign, and whatever, extractions. But, but it does say Invisalign, right? But the problem is, is that number one, what is that page about? That page is about services. And you could say, yeah, that page is a little bit about each of those services, but it's not about it's not about specifically one of those services. And if my competitor has a page that is just about Invisalign, which is a better page for the user who searches for Invisalign, a user who finds a page where Invisalign is one of ten topics, or a dedicated Invisalign page. And so that's why. So if we know now that the keyword is Invisalign Dentist Maplewood, and that's the one we want to target, Google's going to go to its filing cabinet. And I joke with my kids, you know, the card catalog, which they have no idea what that is. Uh, but they're going to go to the card catalog and look and say, okay, what pages do I have that mention the keyword Invisalign Dentist Maplewood? Okay, you know, think about them having out a um, pieces of paper. You know, Google has a pieces of paper on, on their preferable desk and they're saying, okay, which one of these keywords, which one of these websites has the keyword location in the right place? Well, you know, this, these three pages have it in the heading where it's supposed to be, like we talked about H1. And these other ones have mentioned it on the bottom where it says, my friend David is a good, you know, Invisalign dentist Maplewood. So they're going to take those pages that probably have the keyword in the, in the most prominent places in terms of, you know, the title tags, the title of the page, the headings. Now we're going to look at all those pages together. What's the keyword density? And that's kind of the length. If I just have a page that says Invisalign Dentist Maplewood, Dr. Wank is an Invisalign Dentist Maplewood, that's not as good a page as someone's Invisalign page that is three or four paragraphs that really talks about Invisalign. So the length of the content, the density, are there images? What's the page speed? So obviously, if you're a website that says services and lists 10 services and it loads in three seconds, what about my page that loads in six seconds? but really nails it for the keyword, you know, Invisalign Dentist Maplewood and has, you know, has all the other boxes checked. So yours mentions Invisalign and it checks all the boxes. Mine is specifically about Invisalign Dentist Maplewood and I only check the, Invisal the keyword boxes. 
but the content's decent. So that's where you're saying just, well, I, I don't know the answer to that question. You know, what is Google going to think? And again, what do you think is going to be the best user um, experience? And I would say, I'd rather have the page load a little more slowly and give the user the most relevant content possible than have a really fast page with not a lot of relevant content. And the answer to that is, I don't know. But is why I'm going to tell you, let's just be consistent across all of our pages. Consistent headings, you know, keyword density when we're optimizing for a keyword. Let's increase the content length with the keyword you know, with the relevant keyword. And let's just kind of have a good page speed in general. So that's why I don't want to work backwards. I want to put a, a, you know, the best foot forward first and then tweak specifically as we need to later. So our mastery assignments for this module, and then we'll open to questions. What I want you to do is I want you to download a free program called Screaming Frog. It is, um, you don't need the professional version. I think the free version limits you to 50 it's a web crawler and we're going to use it later on to learn about our web pages. So we don't have to look it up by hand. And so I do, even if you want to don't buy the pro version now because it's a yearly license. So I'd rather you wait till we get to it. If you want to buy it, it's something like 150, $175 a year. I mean, I use it, but I think for, for right now, the, the basic version is okay, but it will let you see which of our, our images don't have vault tags. What are the sizes of our images? What are things like that? And I'll teach you when we do our audit how to use it. But I want you to download this now so that we have it when we need it for the audit. And again, do not, you can use the free version. It's totally fine. And along the lines of audits, what I will tell you in advance is that when I do SEO, I do a, I do do an automatic audit and I do a manual audit. And the reason is, is because there are certain things that I need, you know, a human brain for to look at that a computer just can't tell me but there is nothing wrong with doing things that are automated. For example, if you want to look to see, to make sure that all of the images on a website have alt tags, which is not a bad idea, um, there's really nothing, there's nothing terrible about me having a program check that for me because that doesn't require my brain power. Because all I'd be doing is going to every single page on the website, looking at the view source and looking if there's a title tag. So there's no reason to spend time doing that. That's something that can certainly be automated. but so there's, there's nothing inherently wrong or dishonest about using automated tools when they make sense. Um, when I, what I don't like automated tools for is when, for example, you'll go to, um, I forget what it is, one of these services that lets you, you know, for me, I get, you know, solicitations from companies that say, hey, you know, find a website, put it in this tool, see how badly it ranks for everything. We're going to, you know, we're going to make it terrible. And then you can send that to somebody and say, look how terrible your website is. And that's really not right. And that's not fair because it's a computer assessment. And the computer assessment doesn't really always give an accurate, accurate perspective. And so, you know, but looking up things like title tags, I want to see if every page is a title tag. Do I want to open every single page on a hundred page website? No, I'd rather have a computer look for me than I can look myself and look at the results and, and make a decision. So don't feel like you're cheating or that something is wrong if you're using a tool like this. Um, I, I would not, and we are not going to rely only on this tool. There are other tools we're going to use next week that we're going to talk about how to, how to do this, but I don't want you to, you know, think this is somehow, you know, not above board. So what I want you to do this week, number one is I want you to download and install Screaming Frog SEO Spider. Uh, there's the URL. You can just search for Screaming Frog. It is for Mac or for PC. Now, this is a program that runs on your local computer. This is not a program that runs on the internet. It came up during the, um, during the office hours that you know, Google Analytics, Google Search Console, these things live on the internet. So it doesn't matter if you are in your office, in your home or in the air using Wi-Fi on a plane that you can still get to them because Google lives in the cloud. But this program, Screaming Frog, it's like Word or you know, QuickBooks or something like that. It lives on your computer. I also want you to fill in the chart below to start you to get the idea of keywords and when we'd use them. So let's just say for me, let's say as, as, as short hills design, what, what are the most important things to me? I would say building websites, um, selling my SEO services and selling my content writing services. So I would tell you my website landing page would be, you know, websites for dentists. I'd have to look up what the URL is. The other one would be expert dental or expert content writing. The other one would be SEO for dentists. And you might have four or five or six. You can make this longer. 
but I like to focus on three in the beginning when we're learning and then brainstorm a keyword for each that I think might matter. So for my you know, dental website design, I might say websites for dentists, for content, best dental content writer, and maybe for my, um, what was it? For the SEO saying um, dental SEO company. I, I have no idea, but I want to brainstorm keywords because we're going to look back when we actually do research and see how right we were, or how wrong we were, just to prove a point to ourselves. Number two, I want you to fill in this competition, this competitor chart. I want you to look at three, four if you want competitors, because I want to see, um, I, want, I want you to start having a picture now of what your competitors are doing. And so what I want you to do is you can either, you might know just from being in your office that hmm, this, this one or two offices are our competitors. And so write them down. If they don't have a website, you could put a dash for website and smile because then they're not really a competitor, at least for what we're doing. But I want you to write down the name of the practice. Doesn't have to be official, you know, John Smith. The website is whatever it is. Then HML. You don't know how to do an audit yet to compare websites to your website structurally. But what I want you to look at that, I want you to look at that website for, you know, 30 seconds. I don't want just doing a 10 minute audit. Look for it, look at it for 30, 20, 30 seconds. It might be all you need or a minute and put HM or L, high, medium, low. What do you think your, their competition is? And then I, I want a comment of why. If, if you see something that's low competition, you might want to say, because this website is ugly and there's one page and it looks like it's from, you know, um, from the dark ages. Or you might say, wow, it's high. They have a service page. They have a page for every single service and it's beautiful and it loads slowly. All I want to do is, you know, one sentence or two sentences. This is quick. Like, what can you see in 30 seconds to a minute? You know, what's your impression? And this, and I just want to get an idea because I want you to start having an idea of what we're up against. And you're going to find if you have not so many competitors, you might find ranking for these carriers to be a heck of a lot easier. But I just want to sort of get a start there. And then I also want you to watch the video that I uploaded to the training. It's SEO for blog posts. We're going to look at this again when we get to, to writing content. But when it comes to what I talked about, about H1, H2, H3, um, you can take a blog post that you write, and then you can take 10 minutes and turn it into a blog post that's ready for SEO. So watch this video. It's on the training site. I'm going to upload tomorrow this, this course. It's on the training site. It'll be there. But between now and then, if you're writing any content, you are going to be able to use this video as a guide on how to work with those title tags. We will specifically do it with Yoast, which is a plugin for WordPress. When we, when we get to content on really how to do it, how to actually say, let's number one, let us structure this page for SEO based on this keyword. And then let's actually go through it to talk about all of those things, about the keyword density, about the title, all these checklists to make sure we've done a good job for the page. So that concludes tonight's lesson. Um, what I do want to mention is that when it comes to our training, let me turn my video on here. Okay, so when it comes to um, when it comes to the training and the um, the meetings that we have, the the live training, it doesn't have to be limited to questions you have from this week. You might breeze through this week's homework and say, "Okay, that's easy, I'm done." But if you're still going back to last week, then certainly any questions you have are fine. Um, I'm sorry about the glare on that light. But what I'd also like to do is please, 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 if you haven't already, please try and fill out those things from last week because. I promise you, the, the, I can't tell you how valuable those are and having those are going to be, especially as you move later on and you understand really where to put money and where not to put money. So that is that. Um, next week is going to be, so we're going to have office hours on Wednesday. We're going to have two sets of them like before. And then next week, we're also going to have two sets of office hours. And after that, we're going to do the audit. And the audit, what I might have to do, because that's going to be, that's our, the hardest thing. So what, we're, what we might have to do is do, you know, do Monday with a lecture and then office hours and the next Monday with a lecture and office hours, depending upon how we do. So I am going to stop my video and I'm going to open for questions. If I can find the stop video button that we don't need. Let me just do like this. Let me stop video and let me take a look at the participants. Okay, does anybody, you're all on mute, but you can certainly unmute yourselves. Um, I can stick around for a few minutes if anybody has any questions.
All right. Well, it doesn't look like anybody has any questions. So that is that. So I will wrap it up for tonight. Again, I will see you guys Wednesday at 8 Eastern or Wednesday at 930 Eastern for those of you who need me. And I thank you for your patience. And hopefully you are learning and will continue to learn. And I will see you soon.